You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. And so my message today for all of us is serve and be served. If you're taking notes today, you can put those notes in the Bible app or if you're one of those, those people who are stuck in 1887, you can pull out a pen and paper. Have you got your quill ready? Ready the quills, everybody. <laughs> Each to their own. Some people do well with pen and paper. Some people do well with just trying to remember it and forgetting it when they walk out the door. In different cultures around the world, the definition and description of people serving in church life is varied. Some cultures say that everyone is a volunteer who donates their time. Some cultures say that people who serve are in ministry. Some people say you have to be chosen to serve. Some say only those with certain skills or giftings can serve. Today, the question should be, what does the Bible say about who should serve or be in service in church life? This is the question that we need to ask the Bible to get a biblical, Christ-centred response. You know, to be in service is being available to assist someone. We're going to turn to the book of John today. We're going to look at specifically John 13. And in this passage of Scripture, we find Jesus teaching His disciples how we're meant to outwork our relationship with God to the local church. And He uses, he uses this example. John 13, verses 3 to 15, if you're following along on the screen. The Father had given Jesus power over everything, and Jesus knew this. He also knew that He'd come from God, and He knew that He was going back to God. So while they were eating, Jesus stood up and took off His robe. He got a towel and wrapped it around His waist. Then He poured water into a bowl and began to wash the followers' feet. He dried their feet with the towel that was wrapped around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, but Peter said to him, Lord, you should not wash my feet. There's probably some people who's like, I don't want anyone to touch my feet. And Jesus answered, you don't know what I'm doing now, but later you will understand. Peter said, no, you will never wash my feet. I'm not sure if I'd have the guts to like speak to the saviour of the world like that, but you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, if I don't wash your feet, you're not one of my people. And Simon Peter said, Lord, after you wash my feet, wash my hands and my head too. Jesus said, after a person has a bath, his whole body is clean. He needs only to wash his feet. And you are clean, but not all of you. Jesus knew who would hand him over to the enemies. That's why he said, not all of you are clean. That's a sermon for another day. When Jesus finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and went back to the table. He asked, do you understand what I did for you? You call me teacher and you call me Lord but I washed your feet, so you should wash each other's feet. I did this as an example for you. So you should serve each other just as I have served you. This is why we go to the Bible to answer the questions. So this passage of Scripture, it shows us so many things about how God wants us to relate to each other as followers of Jesus. Just for those who are thinking we're going to do some feet washing at the end this morning, we're not doing any feet washing this morning. It's metaphorical for us, right? It's not a... Everybody, wrap your towels around your waist. No, we're not wrapping towels around our waist this morning. This passage of Scripture, it shows us so many things about God and His heart for us as followers of Jesus. See, one of the things that it shows is that when Jesus washes you clean, and when I say He washes you clean, when you receive Him as Lord and Saviour of your life, we're clean, forgiven, made whole. But as you walk through the world, it can get a little bit treacherous. 
in this time of history in the book of John, what was Jesus cleaning from their feet? Dust, mud, dirt, maybe some missiles that the donkeys and camels left on the road. He was saying that you may have had a bath and you're clean before coming to the table with me, but on your travels to meet me, you picked up some dirt or even exposed, were exposed to something that's bad for your soul as the extra extra room that were on their feet. Every person at the table needed to have someone come and serve them by helping clean the world off them. See, the role of cleaning feet at the guest table was was not normally done by the Saviour of the world. It was done by people who who were of employ. People who probably weren't even welcome to take a seat at the table were the ones who normally washed feet. And instead, Jesus makes it known that the person who everyone has come to sit at the table with is not only going to facilitate a banquet as the guest of honour, but he's also going to be the person who's going to wash the world off you. And then he goes on to say, I'm I'm inviting you to do the same for each other. He invited us. He invites us to be known and loved by God, to be forgiven and set free from our sin. He invites us all to join Him in humbling ourselves and learning to wash the world off each other as well. Learning to wash disappointment off, fear off, unbelief off. Doubt, addictions, temptations, bad emotional practices, hyper-spiritual practices. Yes, God wants each of us who are guests at His table to serve each other. Yet you may have picked up some dirt this week as you walk through the world. We may, may have stumbled a bit in sin this week but we're coming back to the table to commune with Jesus and we need a fellow Christian to help wash our feet. Can you help take the the role that Jesus took and help wash off of me what I was never meant to pick up throughout this week while I was out in the world? Can you encourage me? Can you challenge me? Can you love me? Can you ask me what I'm going to do so I don't make a habit out of this? This is the heart that each of us need. See, Jesus is using this unique object lesson to bring His disciples and ultimately us to this very important place on our discipleship journey. We all pick up dust. We all pick up dirt. We all pick up unclean things on our travels. And we're called to help each other and refresh each other. We see the dirt on each other. We see the sin, the unclean things from our travels in the world, from our family of origin, from our workplace, from our choices, from our moments of weakness. And we're called to see it just as Jesus saw it. But we're also called to bring each other to a place of being washed and restored by Jesus. See, it's one thing to see it, but what are you going to do about it? How are you going to love the person that's next to you? You've seen that there's something not quite right right now. But what are you going to do about it? Are you going to go tell somebody else? Or did, you, did you see what they picked up this week while they were in the world? Or are you going to wrap that metaphorical towel around your waist and say, brother, sister, let's come back to Jesus. Let's allow Him to wash that thing that you were never meant to pick up this week. It's what we do with it that matters here. We're called to be moved by compassion and empathy in the heart of Jesus to follow His example. And I put it to you this morning that your ability to serve others is in direct correlation to personally identifying with the actions and heart of Jesus. Identifying with His compassion, identifying with His love, Identifying with what He did to serve others. 
I want to encourage you. Can, can you wrestle with that statement this morning? Can you wrestle with that statement as, you're, as you go through your journey of being a disciple following Jesus? So God has called me. Jesus has invited me through this passage of Scripture to, to serve others in the same way that He served. But I need to identify with Him so that I too can do the same. That means I can't identify with my old ways more than I'm identifying with Him. Those old ways need to be that, the old ways, and the new ways need to be become the way that I walk out my life in following Jesus. How do I personally identify with the heart and actions of Christ? I think it's important that, that we answer that question right now because it's one thing to read that and wrestle, but how, how do I do that? See, the heart of Christ is holy. The heart of Christ is pure. The heart of Christ is without sin. And I personally identify with this through salvation and believing in, with him, in him. I personally identify with His actions by doing the discipleship work to seek healing and seek freedom from my old ways so that I can action His ways to serve others. In Galatians 6, verses 9 to 10, it says this, And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we'll reap if we don't give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially those who are in the household of faith. I wanted us to highlight this this morning because... Truthfully, there, there are moments within church life where I'm convinced that we as Christians treat people out in the world better than we treat people within the church sometimes. So you can, you can join a rotary club. You can, you can join a, a, a community group. You can do great things and, and serve people and give people food and go and cut their lawns and yeah, it makes you feel good. And yeah, it's great for those people. But, but if you're doing amazing things out there, but not sharing kindness and compassion and empathy to the person next to you. This is why I highlight this passage of Scripture and especially to those who are in the household of faith. The Message Bible says, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. God has called us to lovingly, serve the people around us, to bless them with kindness and love. How do you make sure that you don't grow weary in doing good and serving those people in the household of faith? Well, I put it to you this morning that you too have to be served. You can't just go about serving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving so this initial passage of Scripture in John 13, it's like you have to serve each other. Serve each other as I've served you. You can't just give and give and give and give and not grow weary. You need somebody else to come to you and refresh you with service to you as well. You need to be in service and be served also. You can't always be doing and going. You need someone to wash your feet too. There is no one among us who can go, go, go and give, give, give and not eventually grow disheartened in service. You can't always be on. See, being a Christian for longer doesn't make you the strongest person in the room. The only reason that there may be some people stronger in the room is that they know what it is to be served and serve. The amount of years you're a Christian doesn't make you stronger, doesn't make you better. The only thing that makes you stronger and better is you follow Jesus the disciple and implement the practices of the Word of God. It's in Philippians 2 verse 1 to 4, it says this. Is there any such thing as Christians cheering each other up? Do you love me enough to want to help me? Does it mean anything to you that we're brothers in the Lord sharing the same spirit? Are your hearts tender and sympathetic at all? 
that make me truly happy by loving each other and agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, working together with one heart, mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble, thinking of others better than yourself. Don't just think about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and in what they are doing. Serve and be served. Love others and be loved. Wash somebody else's feet and have your feet washed. It's easy to learn to be on the receiving end of help, support and encouragement. Particularly if there's been a significant amount of your life where support and encouragement weren't present. It's easy to learn to be on the receiving end of it's like someone starts serving you and loving you and doing things for you. And it's like, this is amazing. I spent my whole life without a community of faith around me or good friends around me. I, I was in isolation. I was neglected. I was, I was left by myself. And it's easy to be like, this is good. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Being served and loved and made to be encouraged by the people around me. You know, perhaps you grew up and there was no healthy mention of encouragement and love and words that clarified that you're a valued person. Now, if, if this has been your norm, if, if this was your life growing up, the very thing that you had missed and craved for before Jesus or before being in a healthy faith community is potentially the thing that you have found from people within the church. Why? Because they're exemplifying the heart and service of Christ towards you. And to a certain degree, this can be healthy. But I want to encourage you with this today. Where does your help come from? Yes, we're encouraged by Jesus to serve and love and bless each other and wash each other's feet. But when you've had that thing missing from your life the whole time and people begin to pour it into you, it's really easy to begin to look at them as that's where your help comes from. And I I just bring us back to the Scriptures again today. Psalm 121 verse 1. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Why are these individuals around you helping and encouraging you? Because they've caught the heart of Jesus. They are not your helper. They're a blessing. They're your brother. They're your sister in Christ. And they're pouring out the heart of Jesus into you. But your helper, the reason they're doing it is they're serving the Lord. They're serving your helper. Amen. God uses healthy people to impart health into your life. He uses people who are good at encouragement and facilitating what good relationships and good friendships are like so that you can exit the areas of your life where there's been deficiency so that you can enter into the fullness of God's plan for your life to be more like Jesus. This is God's plan for your life and my life, to be more like Jesus. But the temptation for us all, and I've been in this place before personally, the temptation for us all is to stay as the receiver of encouragement. To stay in that place of being poured into with encouragement, to having your feet washed on a regular basis. It's like, this is amazing. It's like, why are you there washing my feet? Can you just put the little massage tub there and just like turn it on? to stay as a taker of words. And I I get it. It's particularly hard when you don't know how to reciprocate. If it hasn't been part of your family or growing up, it's hard to reciprocate that behaviour. I would go as far as saying that it's even easy to become addicted to consuming encouragement. It's easy to attend a faith community where you're equipped with good Bible teaching, empowered by the Holy Spirit and not change. It's easy because you feel good. So this is amazing. I'm being poured into you. I feel great like I should. 
See, we feel better about ourselves. We're saved by Jesus, but our daily living remains the same. See, part of the journey of following Jesus is to follow Him in all of His ways. One of my roles as a pastor is to make sure that you're taught the ways of Jesus. And I say it again, your help comes from the Lord. Your help comes from the Lord. Yes, He uses people within the community of faith, the church, to to show you His heart through their service to you. But He's also calling you to do the same. Not just a one-way transaction. It's a two-way. It's backwards and forwards. Some days you need it more than others. Amen. The call for you and I is to begin to be activated in serving others within the local church too. Proverbs 11.25 says this, A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. And I get it. It's it's, it's hard sometimes, right? It's like I... If I give any more out right now, I feel like I'm about to like pass out on the floor from lack of oxygen. I had that morning yesterday. I said sorry about it to my wife this morning. See, it could like cleaning the discouragement of someone by encouraging them with your words. You might replace their unbelief with faith. You might replace fear with hope in the middle of their week but a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. I want to encourage you. Uh, You might have someone right now in your life. It could be in our church community. It could be someone who's part of another church community. It could be a family member who doesn't know Jesus yet. And you just feel like you're always just constantly pouring in encouragement and serving them and washing their feet, so to speak, as around, around this passage of Scripture, and you're getting nothing back. I just want to encourage you right now. You need to find somebody else also who's actually going to pour it back the other way. I'm allowed to do that. You're allowed to do that. Find somebody who's an encourager towards you as well. Does it mean you stop encouraging the other person? Absolutely not. God has called you to be someone who refreshes others. And you will be refreshed, but can I encourage you, don't expect that it's always going to come back from the same direction. Maybe one day it will. God willing, it will. But but can you just put yourself in front of somebody else who's got that gift of encouragement and exhortation to, to lift you up as well? It's time to take what God has given you. It's time to activate serve people within your local faith community. It's time to take that gift that God's given you and encourage and serve other believers. Activate the ways of Jesus. How? But we'd love you to join our next growth track. This is an sales pitch right now. This is, this is about me as your pastor saying, there's a way that the faith community has to outwork and that doesn't happen by accident. We make choices and decisions to pursue the ways of Jesus. Join the next growth track. It it recognises your giftings. It recognises the ways that you can serve with your gifts. And you also learn about how your church functions. You deserve to know how your local church functions, what the governance is, where the finances go. You You deserve to know these things. Jump in next week on growth track. See, another, way, another one of the ways that you can start this journey towards personally growing in discipleship is getting around good people. Getting around good people. If you're constantly hanging out with negative people, don't be surprised if you're negative. If you're always around angry people, don't be surprised. If you're always around sad people, Don't be surprised if sadness chases your soul. If you're always around people who think the same as you, don't be surprised that those people don't encourage you to chase a dream. If you're always around people who don't have vision for their lives or their families' lives, don't be surprised if you find yourself visionless and without a positive attitude and plan towards your family. 
Proverbs 28, 18 says this, where there is no vision from God, the people run wild. But those who adhere to God's instruction know genuine happiness. You need God's vision for your life. And if you're not getting that from the people that you're closest to, I'm not saying separate yourself fully from them, but I'm saying get yourself around some other good people too who are going to cause you to lift your head, to acknowledge where your help comes from and look to God for a vision for your life. Get around good people that encourage you to raise your behaviours and your practices to line up with God's vision for your life. I want to encourage you, if you're wrestling with sin right now, get yourself around some good people who will help you acknowledge that it's there, but not let you stay there. God doesn't want you to wrestle with sin your whole life without encouragement. There's sometimes we just have to reveal that, not just to God, but a good person who can stand with us and pray with us and encourage with us and say, you know what, you're not the only one who struggled with that. It's been my journey too. Often I think we convince ourselves that we're the only one who is struggling with a certain form of sin. I want to encourage you to dispel that myth, that's myth bus this morning. We're humans. We were born into a sinful world. We found Jesus, but the temptations and challenges are still the same. No one is superhuman. And I guarantee you, the person who portrays themselves that way is probably struggling with it worse than what you are. Did you just say that? Yeah, I did. See, being around good people, it's a part of the solution. They can't do it all for us. We we, we acknowledge that they can't do it all for us. Our help comes from God, right? They can't do your daily discipleship. But you become who you're around the most. Can, Can we just put this picture up on the screen this morning? So these two guys next to me, I'm 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 the guy on the right who's like cut from marble like a Greek god. Don't ask me not to wear a shirt on a Sunday service in church because it, it doesn't look like that any, anymore. <laughs> anymore. I've had three children. Well, my wife's had three children, but I... Yeah. Thank you. I love it. I love it. See, these two guys next to me were the people that I chose to get around after I was saved and finished school. Uh, I I want to convey to you, I had little idea of how to function as an adult or a healthy human at that point in my life. I didn't know how to act around people, how to have deep conversations about life. Didn't know how to have deep conversations about God. I didn't know a lot for that matter. But these two were further along on the journey than what I was. They'd gone further in their faith journey and following Jesus. I'd made a decision that I wanted to move further with God and and follow Jesus in my life, to not repeat generational practices. I made a decision to not bring my dysfunction as a welcome guest into our friendship. It was hard. Didn't, know, didn't always get it right. In fact, I didn't get it right a lot, to be honest, really honest. It doesn't mean that my dysfunction wasn't present, but I observed what was happening in their lives. I began to learn new things. I learned to seek joy in my life, to have fun, to explore spirituality and discipleship. See, each of us were committed to following Jesus. Now, at this moment in time, Each of us is still following Jesus, committed to our wives and families. The journey of of life, it's always a challenge. Following Jesus has always been a challenge. You look at the Bible, following Jesus has always been a challenge. But each of us to this day right now are, are, are serving in faith communities. Why? Because we decided to get around good people. See, just as I decided to get around them, they had also decided to get get around other people. This wasn't the picture of an isolated friendship right here. They were getting up, you know, at 
4 a.m. in the morning and go and praying with people that they'd chosen to get around. I wasn't quite that spiritual. I was like happy to go surfing at 5 a.m., but not pray at 4. <laughs> See, we committed to serving each other, refreshing each other and washing each other's feet. Metaphorically, of course, amen. Just remember metaphorically this morning. See, God really is just after a normal person who would say, I choose to follow Jesus and I'm committed to walking it out daily. Choose to be around good people. Choose to be around good people. See, if you're around soap opera TV all day, your life will become a soap opera. It's the way that you begin to see relationships and family happen by what you consume. If you're around reality TV all the time, you begin to see life life like this. It's idealism at its worst. Real life has highs and lows and in-betweens. Real life is not meant to be like a soap opera or a wild reality show that triggers your emotions every 10 seconds. That's not what healthy family is meant to be about. See, my life before finding Jesus was a roller coaster of chaos. The friends that I was around were substance abusers, criminals. Some of them were jail bound. Truthfully, the friends that I was around were these things and therefore so was I. I'd become a substance user, a, a criminal. I was jail bound. I'm not using metaphors around that this morning. <laughs> it was the path that I was on. I found Jesus and months later, the people that I was around at that time found themselves in jail. Months later. See, God has not called you to a life of chaos and abuse and hanging out with people who abuse you. The life you're called to is one of to find salvation in Christ, to commit to a journey of your soul being healed from the brutality of this world. Real life is supposed to look like all of us gradually exhibiting love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. I wanna encourage you, choose to do good to other people. Choose to serve other people. Choose to wash someone's feet. Choose to refresh someone. See, the fruit of the Spirit, it's Jesus coming out of our lives to the people around us. And we do this by serving each other in love. So what, what, could, it, what could it be that's hindering you to serve the people around you well? Is it the old ways, the stubborn ways? the learnt ways, choices that separate you from feeling close to God and His grace, whatever it is, what could you do to break it? What could you do to break it? Could you bring it to Jesus and agree with Him to break it off your life and choose to be around people that encourage you? strengthen you, exhort you? Could you give them permission to say to you, hey, that's the old you, step into the new you. Could you learn to have your feet washed and wash somebody else's feet around you within the church? Metaphorically, amen. So the question is, where, where to now? Could you enter a transparency with your brothers and sisters in Christ, not to hide in the chaos, but let Jesus shed some light on it? I put it to you this morning that you're free when you step into the Spirit of Christ. You're free, set free by the power of God. But it takes some work to work towards being free from the old life. You need to put new actions and new deeds in place so that it looks more like Jesus. See, Jesus has called each of us every one of us to, to follow His example and serve each other with our words, actions and deeds. Called us to be served and serve, amen. 
just as we close our eyes for a moment this morning. Holy Spirit, God, I thank you that you've placed this teaching on my heart. And I thank you that I've had the opportunity to share it with your church. And God, I pray that every single person would find encouragement in that. This isn't a heavy handed thing. This is an encouragement to pursue the ways of Jesus. And I pray that even in this moment, Lord God, where people are like, yeah, I, I resonate with those things, but I've just, been, I've just been putting things off a little bit because of this and that. And I just, I just want to encourage you this morning, just in this moment, come before God and say, God, I bring all of this towards you my whole life. The things that have been causing me to put it off, I just pray, shed some light on it this morning. Shed your light on it this morning. praying right now that the Holy Spirit gives vision, clear vision, clear understanding. Let your eyes be open. Let your head be lifted to see where your help comes from. Your help comes from the Lord this morning. Holy Spirit, just as your eyes are closed this morning, the Spirit of God is ministering to you this morning. You might be in this place and you don't know Jesus personally. The thing that you need in your life to be able to serve and be served, firstly, is you need Jesus in your heart first. Holy Spirit has been speaking to you in this place. If you don't know Jesus personally, you've been off walking your own journey. Maybe you're watching online this morning. This, this is for you. See, God the ultimate form of service. He sent Jesus to the cross, was buried and rose again on the third day so that you could know God personally. The ultimate form of service so that you could be known, loved, set free from sin, restored into a loving relationship with God. Have peace put into your heart that's you this morning say I I need to respond to Jesus I need to respond to his love I need to be known by God I need to be set free of my sin if that's you this morning can I encourage you just to put your hand up once you put your hand up you can put it back down if if there's anyone say yeah I I need to respond to Jesus this morning just as no one's looking around if you're online this morning you can respond to this right now too so anyone say yeah I, I need Jesus Don't let this moment pass you by. God's calling you back into relationship with Him. Holy Spirit. We're going to pray a prayer this morning. It's a prayer of salvation. Maybe you've prayed it before. Maybe you haven't. But the whole church is going to join us in saying this prayer. I I want to encourage you, just believing this prayer in your heart, speaking it out of your mouth. God will come and meet you where we're at and you'll be known by Him. Why don't, we, why don't we pray this morning? Dear God, I thank you that you sent Jesus. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Him on the third day. I repent of my sin. I surrender my life to you. Come and fill my heart. From this day on, I choose to follow you and activate your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We pray that that message was a blessing to you. If you made a decision to follow Jesus, first of all, congratulations. We think that that is incredible. And secondly, if you go to gc.org.au forward slash first steps, our team has put together some resources as well as there's some information there for how you can get in contact with one of our pastors because we'd love to encourage you and connect you into the life of the church.